Hey, hey, hey. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Let's do some trading, huh? Hey, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results, but please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never, ever, 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 ever risk when you cannot afford to lose. Guten Morgen, my name is Wayne McDonald. I am the chief, whoa, 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 I am the chief FX market strategist for TradersWay.com. Very nice to meet you. Been trading currencies a long time. It's on my mind all the time. So let's do some dollar, let's do some yen, let's do some uh, lira. I'm going to show you lira. Uh, I guess we'll probably talk a little bit about oil. We'll look at gold and what do you say? Call it a day? Probably take us about a half an hour. If I could ask for a, a few moments of your time in uh, in, uh, in back, in, uh, in, in, yeah, I could ask for Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, and also please visit tradersway.com and open an account today. You could have a uh, ECN account, a fixed spread account, variables account, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Kiwi also please, yeah, maybe, maybe, can't promise that, but probably. And yes, happy Canada Day, A. Eh? Happy Canada Day. So, without further ado, let's go. Let's go to here. All right, hang on. So, I wanted to show you this this lira. We've been watching this trade since I made it back in May. A couple of things to point out. One, uh, the this first one at the top. That took 100 of my dollars. That's how much collateral I needed. Okay, that's what's required. Then you get leverage, right? So one hundred dollars from the actual account gets used as collateral, and I short it. Great. So a couple of things to point out: that one trade now is up a thousand dollars floating profit. But I also want to point out that it's collected a hundred and fifty dollars in interest since. Uh, uh, May 9th. So let's say all of May, all of June. That's it. In two months, 150%. How do you like them apples? Just on the interest. And then uh, a few weeks later, I took that other pissy little one. That one required 10 of my dollars. That is now paid $15 in interest and is now up $80 in profit. That's the power of staying with the trade, the power of the high yield carry trade, huh? Now, I bet you anything, if you if you did that with another broker, you wouldn't get that kind of carry. But Trader's Way, in my opinion, is pretty awesome that way. The power of the carry trade, huh? So remember, it makes money while I'm sleeping. You need your money to work for you that way, too. Maybe not every trade, but you definitely need to try it. Thank you, RC. Oh. <clears throat> Food for thought, though, right? So, obviously, what I could do is I have my stops at break even. I can move them closer, but it's not the point, I suppose, right? 
<clears throat> yeah, there's anything with the lira on it's going to be a good trade. Um, okay. But anyways, uh, yeah, I just thought since that rolled over, a hundred dollar investment's now worth a thousand dollars in appreciation. Plus, I collected a hundred and fifty dollars in interest. That's 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 a pretty good return for uh, for two months in any type of investment. Um, 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 um. All right, so let's just go here. Okay. So how's your education going? Are you guys focusing on on some sort of some form of training over the summer? I was tired last night at 9:30, so I got up and went to the coffee shop. Worked at the coffee shop. They closed at 11, so then I went over to the uh, the student union and I kept studying there. Oh, you know what? I want to thank you for those that uh, helped me on the GoPro project. I got a 98 out of 100. Thank you. Thanks for your help. And then uh, I had an exam last week. I got 100% on that. But this morning I have an examination, then a debate, and then this afternoon I have a midterm and then on to a next uh, project. So anyways. Cool. Well, good job, everybody. Focus on it. Focus hard. This is important. Find something that, that do find something to do this summer that will make you a significantly better trader. Don't just trade. Just don't coast through the time. Oh, uh, it's a leadership. It's a leadership. Different styles and such. So anyways, okay? But I'm just saying make sure you take the opportunity to make a significant difference in your trading over the summer. Don't let it float by. Okay. Andrew wants to know entry points. Well, if you're a bull, you buy at support. If you're a bear, you sell at resistance. Then you're like, well, how do you know when to pull the trigger? Okay, great question. Well, first of all, that's what like 5A crosses and oscillator crosses are for. But we also know that uh, reversal patterns at support and resistance are also key. But ultimately, you're going to have to take the risk and move your stop. Okay. So, like this gold one, this is on an hour chart. This gets this gets kind of interesting. Where, uh, wait, I don't have a drawing tool. Heavy load. By the way, I tried to see. There we go. I'll be there. All right. Um, this gets interesting because someone could debate on this time frame that this is a downward move, and others, because of this being the bottom, could say this is an upward move and simply a correction. Okay. <laughs> right, Charles, right? Um, so this is interesting because it is both. Okay. If you look at the downward move using weekly analysis, okay, just look at it. What was supposed to happen this week according to the tools on this chart? What was the projected bottom for this week based on our, the tools we use?
Thank you, Andrew. Yes, if you don't know, please type in a question mark. It's very helpful to me to understand um, the information gap. Not doing anything doesn't help me at all. Yeah, so this, this right here is the conservative projected entry. Uh, no, the conservative projected low for the week. So this move here technically can be done. Now, there, there, it might go lower, and we'll find out when it tests this. But notice that you could have taken the last, like, eight hours off. Okay. So there might be a small trade there. There could be a small trade here. But the, the big thing is the projected move was here. And I'm not talking central pivot point. I'm talking M1, weekly M1. Okay. Jorge says sell at M3, but dude, M3 is here. That's what you were supposed to do on Friday. You understand, guys? How many times have you heard me say, if you can't see it on Thursday, you're not going to trade it on Monday? How many times have you heard about, like, the Friday front run? That's what this is. And the target when you did that was down here. So that might be over. Okay. That move is done. Someone got paid. Now, what I, I can't tell you for sure is if we're going down here or not. That That's possible. And right now, with price action, someone's going to try this. But then, if it's going to turn back bullish, this would be the place you'd look for it. Okay. Oh, thank you for subscribing. Okay, you see what I mean? Bears should have taken profit. Well, Bears should have sold on Thursday, maybe Friday. And Bears should have taken profit six or seven hours ago. Done. So with this idea now buying at support, um, you could buy like... I'd, I'd go in a smaller time frame, but let's just say you could buy this. But because these bears don't quite know yet what's happening, they'll probably sell again here. The 55 is in control. Now the 55 predicts a double bottom, so this double bottoms. Okay, and then it bounces again because now bulls have a double bottom at support. And these bears give up. And you're going to move like this and this and this, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but that is one likely plan. It's a hypothesis. And now you use technical analysis to confirm or deny your hypotheses. It's better than just sitting around watching. So Charlie says, I don't know if I want to be bullish right now. Then that's what a trade plan is. So you could say... There's definitely potential for it to turn bullish. You don't want it to be bullish now. So you would like to see not just a double bottom, but probably a one, two, three. Okay. Right. One. Double bottom, two, higher high, three, roll reversal.
Now Charlie says buying it down here might be cool. Okay. It's just uh, you couldn't plan for that to happen this week. Now it might happen this week, but it shouldn't happen this week. Okay, because you're throwing away your weekly analysis. That might happen, and that might actually be a good entry, but technically that's not likely. Not in the moment. So you have to be focused on plan A first, and then plan B second, if plan A fails. Okay, oil doing its thing. Friday front run. Friday target. So there's your day trade. Okay. Pretty pretty typical day trade. So if you're going to try it again, it's going to be like this. It's amazing, huh? Is that a weak Swiss franc? the fundamentals of gold uh, let's see the Fed lowering interest rates and um, trade negotiations with China possibly coming to uh, a solution both of those things weaken the dollar and when the dollar weakens gold goes up Okay, classic swing trade, entry, target. Uh, not really much you can do now. As a bull, uh, once it actually opened, it opened out of position, so you probably know you take off the 4-hour 21. Uh, it's kind of hard to sell a higher high. Didn't quite hit the pivot, so it was more like you, if you did your job on Friday, it's a simple Friday front run, uh, you'd obviously you'd have to already be bullish. You know this setup doesn't make you bullish, but if you were bullish and you're trade planning your swing trade for the next week, once again that's a pretty standard entry. Okay. Notice, however, this is not just a weekly trade. Okay. So th this is your bullseye, right? But check it out. It's also a monthly entry. And your target for the month is like way the snap up here. Now, I don't know if I want to be buying dollar uh, that whole period, but it's interesting how weak the Swiss franc is. Amazingly weak. So are you making money selling Swiss franc right now? Risk on, baby. Risk on. What else happens? Yens typically weaken. Dollar typically weakens. Oil tends to go up. In fact, all commodities tend to go up. Okay. Stock market rallies. Bond market falls. Okay. You should be able to see all of that by looking at this pair. Take a look at Beast. Nobody on the world in the world likes the Beast. But it's starting an upward move. Huh. That's what the Swiss franc told us too. Check this out. Friday front run. Right? Weekly target. This is your second chance re-entry. Okay. 
up, up, oops, up, 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 down, down, right, consolidation, maybe a breakout, up, 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 down, down, up, 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 up. No, I don't like this pair. I don't like pound, but it's definitely there. Yeah, thanks for the heads up about the RBA. I'm just showing you, like, even the Swiss franc and even the pound yen. They're going up. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And, of course, you would expect USD CAD to fall. As I just explained, you would expect the US dollar to be weak. You'd also expect oil to go up. CAD, uh, the, uh, the Canadian economy is an exporter of oil. They're going to benefit from higher oil prices because it doesn't cost more money to pump oil out of the ground. It doesn't cost more money to actually buy a barrel, an empty barrel, and then it doesn't cost more to put the oil into the barrel. But you can sell it at a higher price. Canada likes that. So you would expect this to be on a downward trajectory. Oh, sweet. Cool. But as far as an open, very little happened. They're neutral. Okay. So I would expect maybe something like this. If that happens, we're going to have a nice, big, fat, lower low. If it, cons if it goes a little higher before consolidation does this, it's going to run into that 55 and then really potentially set us up for that. But I, I don't see that in the cards yet. But that might be tomorrow. We'll just see how it goes, right? But you see the difference? One says down, 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 and one says whoa, whoa, whoa. That's why we use our moving averages, guys. They tell us stories. Right? They're stories. They're, they're information. If all you use your moving averages for are crossovers, you're not thinking. You're looking for a red arrow or a green arrow. This is information. They're an algorithm that prints colors. You should be able to see, look at how fast this market is moving. First of all, it is technically bearish. And second of all, it's aggressively bearish. So if we lose the aggressiveness out of the market, that increases our vulnerability for reversals. But if all you're doing is looking at crossovers, you're not thinking. Well, the moving averages are the moving averages of the moving averages, right? So if you, you change, right? You know the theory of relativity? It, it's relative. So right now I'm looking at the four hour. On this point of view, this market is bearish. Now on a 15 minute chart, it may not be bearish, but the four hour is bearish. So one trick is to try to line them up or trade them into each other depending on the situation but that four hour is bearish that's it so on this time frame that is bearish so for example before I drop into it like some of you guys try to sit around and say well I cannot short this until the four hour the one hour and the 15 minute all say down uh, okay the other way you could do it is when price is touching this which is definitely uh, a level of resistance then you drop into a 15 minute chart and then you trade a 5 a cross down. So you take a bearish move on a 15 minute chart set up by a bearish resistance on a four hour chart. Okay. Standing in line at the deployment line and being the light so heavy glow. By the way, I tried to see her be there. Yeah, 
Yeah, no one said you should sell it at support, right, Charlie? Let's get top of the range. Top of the range. Well, you certainly can, Manipur, you certainly can. Uh, I, I'm too tired to go into like a full a full speech on on the theory, but <clears throat> remember from, from your point of view when you're observing something, you, you see and measure things from your point of view. And you can measure something from another point of view and get completely different uh, measurements but it's all relative to where you are in the space-time continuum. Well, and what we're doing here is, is price-time continuum. And when I'm measuring Euro-Yen on a four-hour, it's bullish. That's it on a four-hour. There's nothing more. It's scientific methodology. I'm using tools. They measure it. The tools say it's bullish. It's absolutely 100% correct. But I can drop to a one-minute, and from that point of view, get a different measurement but also on that time frame that is also correct right it's all relative to your point of view a four hour chart from way up here or a one minute chart way down there and the thing is they're both right it's now what you need to do is be able to understand um the different time frames and how they work together right yeah and obviously, like a four hour probably has more mass than a one hour. You can really carry it as far as you want. Um, but yeah. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can we can really get into physics. Yeah. Have you ever tried to, to apply Euler's theorem to currency trading? Blow your mind. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so we're getting to the top of the range. Be careful. Notice how Friday Front Run puts you in here. Target's here. We may have already hit that. Pound yen. Okay. Friday front run, Friday front run, second chance maybe. I would write this down if I were me. If you can't see it on Thursday, you're not going to trade it on Monday. If things had gone properly for you, you would have woken up today and said, Holy snap, was that awesome. Boom! If you're waking up today and you're looking for trades, you're not listening to me. Okay, these, today is a payday. It's Monday and we're hitting targets already. In fact, that creates a vulnerability of reversal. Okay. We have the potential now to hit a reversal. But think of it this way. Today is all about taking profit. If you're just looking at this and it's just starting to like looking for your day, trade of the day, you're missing the whole point on how to trade properly. So please take that as a message. And let it ring loud and clear. These trades... You should be exiting now in the trades you took Thursday and Friday. Now, when you, we hit targets on a Monday, like let's go back to like Euro Yen. When you're doing stuff like this on a Monday, you, it makes you quite vulnerable.
to something like that. Now, it still might go up, but um, most people, the big boys, the professionals, the yellow Lamborghini traders, um, they exited. Now, I would assume they're going to buy a dip and try to get back in, but it's really dangerous to show up to the playground and you're doing stuff here when you should have been doing stuff down here. You understand? If you look at everything I've ever taught you over the last 15 years, it's all about things like buying off the 21, right? Front running the pivots, for example. Doing something up here is just uh, almost negligent. Okay? Almost negligent. You're like, what are you? It's just scary. So, if you can't see it on Thursday, you're not going to trade it on Monday or before Monday. Look, look at this setup. This is so ridiculously set up for you. I'm, I'm not even looking at the monthly, by the way. I'm looking at just standard swing trading. Maybe you don't know how to swing trade. Then I'll give you some other advice. Maybe you should take the swing trading course. You need to know these things. Okay, so again, I'm talking to the people that show up Monday morning looking for a trade. If that's what you do, you are going to starve to death. It's kind of like showing up for an exam and you haven't studied for it. And you're like, yeah, 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 I'll do all right. I have a pretty good memory, you know. I was in all the lectures. I watched all the lectures. I'll do all right. Mm-mm. 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 Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Standing in line in, in the employment line with the lights on. Baby boo. Okay. This one is tricky because the Aussie was so weak that there isn't a decent, like, front running a, a July trade. No, it's not really there. Um, before last week, the market was quite bearish. And so if you look at last week's trades, yes, you could say that you could have bought this and off you go. Um, but you could have also sold it, although the, the buying is much more straightforward than the selling. Okay, like this is perfect. This is perfect. This is not perfect for selling. So it, it's definitely more bullish, but maybe less likely to have thought that this would turn bullish. Um, Aussie's been quite weak, so to get a huge rally like that is really something else. But what do we know? What's in the textbook? Well, we know what's in the textbook is if you're a bull, somewhere between this line and this line, you were buying. Well, snap, that's pretty gosh darn perfect. Now, the target is only here, but the thing is, if if the market's been bearish for a while, you're not going to have bullish you know, pivots. They're going to be close. They're going to be tight, especially after a range. We call this an inside week. So after an inside week, you typically blow the doors off the weekly pivots. Okay. So anyways, now on a Monday, we're way up, you know, the target is here and we almost hit it. So the vulnerability is a lot of the market participants that put the money in down at, uh, we'll call it entry level A. Okay. A lot of those may have put targets up here and they may, there may be a significant exodus. It could come all the way down here and then start again maybe Thursday or Friday. Michael said, do, in, uh, do these targets being hit, does that have anything to do with going to Hamptons? Yeah, you know, 
We uh, today is Canada Day. Uh, Thursday is Fourth uh, of July. Yeah, it's gonna get quiet. Um, market guys. So like in my cohort, we have uh, three people in finance, two bankers and a wealth manager. Um, I met someone the other day who uh, works in a major government. And, uh, well, I guess I can't talk about that. Anyways, um, no, I would say summer school, have I met professional like hedge fund managers and stuff? No. Like I said, just in my group, there are three other people there. So like, for example, my friend David uh, runs a bond trading desk at a and it's probably the largest bank in Canada. Right? My friend Johnny is a, a middle market banker. So if you needed $50 million for your business, he could talk about it with you. That kind of stuff. Which means you need at least $500 million in revenue and stuff like that. But anyways, so the... It'll lead interesting lives. Um, I'm running out of energy. I'm also running out of time. I have an exam coming up. Two, well, and then I have two exams today. And then I get a new case study, so I have to do another one. So thank you for that help again with the GoPro paper. Yeah. Your, uh, your feedback really helped. I think that's what really took the grade up a notch okay I probably wrote a paper that's worth 93 but with your feedback and your and all that kind of stuff uh, I think it knocked it up to a 98 now the interesting thing too is uh, in four hours I got 200 surveys just redonkulous so again you know, the loyalty and respect you show me every day um, really, really motivates me to um, to be, I don't know, a positive influence in your life. So thank you very much for that. I work, I, I try to give you everything I have. So I've only slept four hours and I'm off for another big day, but it was really good hanging with you guys for 45 minutes. Okay. So anyways, uh, I got to go. Um, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. Thank you for being clients of Trader's Way. If you're not yet a client, then, uh, then hey, would you please visit Trader's Way, open an account, become part of the Trader's Way family. Like I showed you earlier, um, you know, with these, uh, um, try compare the, the, the yields that Trader's Way is paying you to any other broker you want. I bet you Trader's Way will blow you away. So uh, going back to that last uh, that last trade, where was it now? I go into here. Like, just check it out. Try it. Say, if I was in the Euro Turkish lira trade since the 9th of May, would I would I have earned 150% interest in two months? I bet you I bet you the answer is no. Some of you guys might have lost money. <clears throat> negative interest, negative swaps, and all that kind of stuff. That's pretty good. Okay. Remember, this is just the swap. So yes, I put a hundred dollars into that trade of actual cash in my account, but every single day I get paid a little bit, get paid a little bit, and paid a little bit. So that hundred dollars, it's not at risk. I got my stop at break even. I get that hundred dollars back, but I've been paid a hundred and fifty dollars more in interest. And then, as you can see now, I'm well over a thousand dollars in profit. So that's a pretty good return for two months. I bet you you're not going to get swaps like that with another broker. So maybe you want to visit Trader's Way.
open up a demo account and just test and compare to the Pepsi, do the Pepsi challenge. So, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Cheers.